530 here at KI. Welcome back to the KI Afternoon News. Casey Freelove with you here. I'm going to talk about a topic that I think a lot of folks are going to be learning about here uh, with the population aging. I'm going to talk a little bit about aging in place and also some safety tips as for some people, including people I've actually spoken to, uh, this will be the first weekend that uh, grandchildren and their grandparents have been able to get together in quite some time. So we're going to talk about a few different topics here as we welcome in Ruth Busalaki, who is the owner of Synergy Home Care. Ruth, thanks for joining us. How are you today? Very good. Thank you for having me on the show. Yeah, I appreciate your time. I think it's a, a very interesting topic. Uh, we do a community outreach program on this very station every Saturday, and I produce that program. And one of the topics that we talk about quite a bit is aging in place. I, would do, I want to get your take on that because it seems like, obviously, with the baby boomer generation uh, getting to that point, where they're, they are, I mean, we're all getting older by the day, let's not kid ourselves, but what, what you're finding is a lot of folks do want to stay in their home. They think they're the most comfortable, the most, I guess, mentally alert, and just feel better about taking care of themselves rather than uh, going into some sort of care facility. So let's just uh, talk a little bit about this aging in place. Sure. You know, the um, recent report from the AARP states that 86% of seniors over the age of 65 do want to remain home. And that is as a result of that greatest generation and the baby boomers saying, let's look at this a little bit differently. There are many, many options that a person can take as they're aging, but our, our um, current generation, they want to age in place. And so we just have to identify what are the things that they may need as time goes on so they have the right support so they can fulfill their goals. Now, this whole phenomenon is, has come into focus a little bit more with the pandemic that we're faced with, because I think in the past, if, if you had a parent, parent that lived, you know, if you're lucky enough to live near your mom or dad, or if they're both still alive, you could you would obviously go spend time with them, whether it's a weekend barbecue or, you know, just kind of, a, I, I used to go have dinner once a week with my mom at her house. I've actually taken on a more active role in caring for her now. But uh, just a little bit about that, I guess I want to kind of get your your pulse on how the nation is handling this. You're joining us from the Midwest, but it's obviously a concern all around because isolation and loneliness is a huge part of being able to actually stay at home by yourself. Without a doubt, it has been a challenge for all of us. I think for most, we've been able to adapt relatively quickly to maintaining our personal connections, learning some social media technology to adapt. That is much more challenging for the, the um, folks that are over the age of 65. And so they're feeling definitely much more shut in, much more isolated, and um, they're suffering as a consequence of it. So we do need to find ways to support them in their own homes. And it, it's, it's leading to, in some cases, kind of behavior that, that, that would be maybe labeled as, as uncommon to their past. like. I mean, it doesn't matter what age you are. A lot of people, there's been an uptick in alcohol and, and drug use. There's been an uptick in, in people saying that they're feeling anxiety and a mental health toll that this is taking on us. And I guess that doesn't really matter what age you are, but you do have to consider some of the seniors, everything that they've seen over their course of a lifetime, which is absolutely amazing, uh, there's nothing they could do pre to prepare for this moment, which is, you know, panic in inducing, basically. I, I couldn't agree more. And, you know, as we adapt we find that most of us are creatures of habit. When we're asked to change those habits, sometimes you're not successful at that. And, and we've all seen mental health um, issues go up and cognitive issues for seniors result in, in um, some of those challenges. We're visiting with Ruth Busalaki. She's the owner of Synergy Home Care, talking a little bit about kind of the, the pandemic and, and, and people wanting to stay in their homes. Now, it's interesting. I'm looking at the prep sheet, and I just had this conversation literally earlier today with a friend of mine who is going to take his daughters to go see his mom. So they're going to go see grandma for the first time since March. Now, he's very excited, yet anxious at the same time. And I think a lot of folks are going to find themselves in that boat this weekend. They're feeling like, okay, look, we are going to go travel. We've got a three-day weekend. We've been sitting in our house for three months. We want to go visit our loved ones. What would be What would be your advice as far as, I guess social distancing, how to handle it, because your first inclination is going to be you want to hug your loved ones. And I, I don't know, d does that still work, I guess, is my question. Boy, that's a challenge. We are always suggesting that both parties wear masks. 
and we're always suggesting that you wash your hands as frequently as possible. I, I think that's a, a, a personal decision when, when you do meet with your loved ones. Anyone who has chronic conditions is a little bit um, 65 or older, they're going to have a harder time recovering from something like COVID, so you do want to be conscientious. But you can still meet social distancing and wearing masks and good hand washing. And you mentioned earlier the technology. I've, I've actually kind of had some fun kind of introducing my mom to Zoom so she can keep in touch with her friends who are, are scattered pretty much all over the state. And we're just, you know, she's well, she's over 70, so we're trying to keep her uh, healthy as well. And you can actually have some fun with it because, you know, seniors, whether they fight it at first, they, they do adapt because they want to be able to talk with their friends. And that, that's a good thing. Absolutely. Zoom bingo is something I'm hearing become yeah. popular. Um, Zoom exercise, uh, all of those types of things can really change the way playing cards um, it, with a little bit of support. You can figure out that technology. And for some of our seniors, that is actually a great solution. Yeah, and it's one that uh, I think once we get back to whatever the new normal is, it's something that doesn't have to go away, especially if your friends uh, don't maybe live near you. Uh, Ruth, let's talk about, uh, it mentions here something called activities of daily living. And I think you were talking about how our lives are kind of lived in patterns. Can you can you tell me a little bit more about that? Sure. You know, when you do visit with your family, whether it's on a video chat or whether it's in person, you, you want to sort of do what we call benevolent probing. It's kind-hearted, it's well-meaning, but it really the intention is to make sure that you're seeing things that might be subtle changes in your loved ones so that you can support them and advocate for their goal to stay at home. And one of those things is Activities of daily living. How are they managing their daily care? And, and you do that by sort of opening up your senses. You want to make an uh, observation, check their appearance. Are they well shaved? Um, does their hygiene look good? Uh, do you suspect that maybe they're wearing the same clothes? Um, those are tip-offs. Is the house a little bit more cluttered than usual? Those are things that might tip you off that maybe they're not managing as well as they were. Yeah, and we talked, uh, we, we, we've been talking throughout the conversation about uh, technology. You want to make sure that they're that they're able to get up and around because I think w- the big fear we have is we don't want mom or dad to, to fall in the shower or, God forbid, fall and hit their head or something uh, we'll, while we're not there. So we need to make sure that they are still mobile. Uh, how, how do we go about doing that? And if you are visiting uh, face-to-face or even on a chat, ask them to go for a walk. See how they get up out of their chair. Are they grabbing onto furniture? Has their gait changed ever so slightly? Uh, do they tire easily? Those are things you want to be aware of, as well as, hey, Mom, take me into my bedroom. Show me, uh, you know, um, how, it, how you've changed it. Those are the types of things that you can observe their mobility and their ability to um, navigate the home safely. We're visiting with Ruth Busalaki. She's the owner of Synergy Home Care, which uh, serves a bunch of different people uh, there in the Midwest, and everything from companion care to 24-7 live-in care, so kind of an expert on the topic that we're discussing here. Now, we've seen a lot in recent years about uh, whether it's dementia or Alzheimer's. It starts with kind of forgetting something, and then it can obviously become Uh, much more severe as the condition worsens. It's also something, Ruth, that a lot of us are reluctant to broach the subject with our parents because we don't want them to get offended. But as you're saying, if if we need to make sure that we're monitoring folks that are aging in place. So how do we kind of navigate this delicate dance? Correct. So we definitely want to be aware of it, and we want to get past the idea of being afraid to talk about it. When you have a conversation with your loved one, you don't want to ask simple yes or no questions. You want to ask questions that are open-ended, that um, require more of an involved answer. I would imagine any one of us, if we were concerned about our memory, we might try to hide that. Yeah. And so simply by answering yes or no, we're avoiding the, um, the chance to really get a, a, a deep probe into what might be going on. So asking about current events talking about the family, who might be getting married recently, really uh, getting a gauge if your loved one has a general understanding of what's been going on. I like to suggest that you also take a look at their activity calendar. Many of us plan our visits, plan our doctor's appointments on a calendar, and by observing that, you can really get a sense of where they're at. If they are not putting anything on there, they might forget. 
um, or if they look confused and crossing things off. Another telling place is the checkbook. You can open up someone's checkbook, take a look at the checkbook register, and that will tell you an awful lot. Now, obviously, if, if we notice something is off, I think one of the keys to caring for whatever it is, whether it's, you know, dementia, Alzheimer's, things of that sort, catching it early so that the quality of life can remain at the highest level possible. So if we feel like we're noticing something isn't right, if they're not giving us the responses that we're kind of expecting to hear, what, what would be your advice there? My advice very strongly is to take action, whether it's a conversation with your siblings to kind of talk about, have you observed the same? You want to move, uh, take a move forward. You don't want to have a cross your finger plan because that could only lead to a potential crisis. And then you're really not advocating. And once you do that, you can certainly reach out to Synergy Home Care and talk to us about what your concerns are. We can help you create a plan, whether it's an immediate plan or it's a plan in the near future, to provide the right amount of support for your loved one. That's what I like about groups like yours is you, you, you've you seen so many different types of situations that you can go from, you know, somebody who's just realizing, oh my goodness, this is starting to happen to somebody who maybe is a little further along and uh, it had been hidden from them. So you can really kind of direct them uh, where to go. What's the best way to reach out to you as far as o- online or do you have a, a phone number we can get? We do. We actually have an office in Roseville, California. Great. Christine Sorgeman has been an owner for uh, since 2012. And you can reach her at 916-899-5925. And you can always go online to SynergyHomeCare.com. Again, folks, uh, here locally, Roseville, just down the road from Auburn, 916-899-5925. And one of the things I like about groups like yours, as I mentioned, you're kind of a one-stop shop as far as you've seen a lot of it. So. I'm not saying you know the answers to everything, but you're probably, you know, pretty well prepared for the types of questions that you get, which which rate which vary wildly, I would assume. Absolutely. We believe very strongly in customizing the kind of care that you need and help you finding the resources to put an entire program together so you can fulfill your goals. We've been visiting with Ruth Busalaki. She's the owner of Synergy Home Care. Ruth, thank you for the time. Let me wish you and yours a very happy Independence Day weekend, and we appreciate you being on K-High Radio with us. Thank you. Thank you so much. Be safe. We'll take a quick break and be right back. 